Everything we do is to manifest an intent. Be it pick up a glass and, and, and drink it, right? It's for an intent. You go to work for an intent. You answer a call or ignore a call, all for an intent. Everything we do is for a certain result or outcome. Now, magic is simply the science of change to have results that appears to be magical. There's nothing magical about it. It appears to be for, from the standpoint and the vantage point of the person that doesn't understand the science. So making things happen, walking in a way that others perceive to be miraculous and to change your perception as well. And when you look at things scientifically, and essentially this is what we do in metaphysics. We look at things scientifically, we make the bridge from science to metaphysics, when in truth they're all one. You're doing magic right now by simply listening to this broadcast. When you lift a finger to, you know, pick up your phone or to grab something to eat or to walk, all of that is magic. How is that magic? Well, we talk about telekinesis and telekinesis is being able to use the mind to move material objects without touching it. You're using simply will, right? Imagination and intent and psychic energy to move physical objects, right? There's people that can move things with their mind. Telekinesis. Well, let's look at it, people. Right now, I'm moving my vocal cords and I'm moving the molecules and atoms in my body to move my hands. And I'm using my mind. So technically, in all reality, we have control over our body based on magic. The spirit or the mind is able to will and intent. And through psychokinesis, we can move our arms, we can move our legs, we can move our mouth. That's magic. It's no different than making things happen in the exterior world once you understand that there's really no separation. You understand that there's no difference and you align yourself with the truth, like they said in the Matrix. You know, Neo went to the Oracle and there were other potentials there, right? There were children being raised up who had gifts of being able to see reality. And the little boy was able to move the spoon with his mind. And he'll say, how do you do that? And the young man said, you can't bend the spoon with your mind. It's, that's impossible. The only way you can do it is through realizing the truth. The truth is there is no spoon. What do you mean there's no spoon? Only thing that exists in the universe is you and your level of connection to the source. That's all that exists. When you internalize that truth, or when you're gifted to see that truth, you're able to manipulate things on the matrix level, or on the illusion level. This is why magic is often associated with illusions. If you were to Google it right now, magic is the appearances and illusions. This whole realm is an illusion. But when you tap into the truth, now you can manipulate the illusion. So the real key is about expansion. It's about expanding your definition of yourself, expanding your power so that you become less dense and less defined. Higher densities means that you're less dense. The same way when you boil water, it becomes less dense. The molecules move so fast that they have to move from that high concentration that makes it a liquid into a lower concentration that makes it a gas based by the kinetic energy, right? Of those molecules moving so fast, they begin to expand, right? Through elevation, constant elevation is expansion. It causes expansion, but it also is expansion. So as you elevate in your mind, you become, you become more, uh, uh, less defined in one area, you expand the same way your aura expands. Your electromagnetic aura in your body begins to expand. You have more power and influence as you expand. And as you expand, you're less defined and confined right, to one 
place or one person or one thing, right? Third density, persons, places, and things. You begin to transcend that. So walking in your magic is simply living in alignment with God's law. See, when we say connected to God, it's, it's often associated with, an, with the so-called spiritual aspect or an emotional aspect. First of all, in alchemy, we don't deal with the word spiritual. Spiritual is a very allegorical, you know, very abstract term, right? We're dealing with vital energy. Spirit is energy. And as you know, here at Hidden Power University, we're going into our, our segment and our realm of alchemy, which is approaching everything like science. And that is Nanak. That's right knowledge. We got to stop using these wiggle words like spirituality. No, it's vital energy. Right. It's consciousness. See, that's what we are. Vital energy and consciousness. So walking in your magic is simply aligning yourself with the source. Right. Which is the all, which is the one, the one self. There's only one self. Like I say in the book, the hidden self, there's only one self that differentiated itself into a multitude of seemingly different objects and people and personalities and identities. That's the illusion. Tapping into the most high or tapping into God is tapping into one of the powerful universal laws we're going to go into today, which is the source, right? All is one. The other part is, and all is mine. See? So universal law is what we're really tapping into. God manifests as laws. There's laws in the universe. And when you align yourself with God's law, now you align yourself with God's power. Nothing happens outside of the law. But the mere fact that certain laws can be transcended. Certain laws are mutable and certain universal laws are immutable. So that's just a little advanced. But I'm going to tell you today that how you align yourself with manifesting in terms of the Emerald Tablets, in terms of universal law, is aligning yourself with these laws. And when you align yourself with these laws, there's no more depression or sadness. There's no more, uh, you know, uh, feeling of lack. Because you understand the seasons. You understand how things work. And you know how to transmute yourself or adjust your sails. Like we teach here at Hidden Power. You adjust your sails to the wind of resistance. And through sacred geometry, how you are able to adjust your sails or your cells or your energies, this is how you can actually travel through resistance. And it's a fact in physics. There's certain sails that can be adjusted a certain type of way when you're sailing on an on a ocean ship or a sea ship, sailboat, that when wind is blowing against the vessel, you can adjust the sails in such a way that you can travel through the wind. So the wind isn't really the, the problem the problem is you have to learn how to adjust your sails to transcend with that resistance. Resistance is a great force of power and opportunity if you but know how to use it. So this is how we use it. We understand the physics of our universe. We understand we're going to go into the 12 basic universal laws of this dimension. And those are the law of polarity, the law of rhythm, the law of vibration, cause and effect, gender, the law of attraction slash magnetism, the law of mentalism, correspondence, mastery, transmutation, the law of intentional action, and the law of one and the law of one. First, the law of polarity. How can I use the law, law of polarity and what is polarity? Polarity simply means different opposing extremes, similar to magnetism, but polarity just deals with opposites. Another way to describe it is the law of duality. You see, in our realm, we have duality. We have up, we have down, we have hot, we have cold, Right. 
bitter and sweet. So the law of polarity, once you understand that, you know that there's an opposite to everything. And when I get to the uh, section on transmutation, you're going to learn how those two laws go together. But know from a very basic level that we live in a world and a realm of duality and polarity. Everything has its opposites. Number two is rhythm. Rhythm is a constant vibration okay it's a constant vibration it's similar to the law of vibration but rhythm deals with the ebbs and flows of life the ebbs and flows of life right now we're talking about a recession and everybody's talking about what, whether we're in a recession or we're going to a recession and what does this mean globally what does it mean as a person individually personally well, the law of rhythm manifests in the economic cycle. See, when you had all of the stimulus checks and money being outpoured by the government and people not spending, when that lifted, it had to go to another extreme. People got out of right, uh, you know, seclusion or what you call lockdown and they begin to spend all of this money. Money was abundant. So money loses its value and prices go up and they are keep going up. The prices of homes are through the roof. Everybody figuring, wait, wow, I could just work from home. See, so the demand on housing has increased. So that makes the pricing go up. Well, it's in direct correspondence to the time when people weren't working and people had extra money and we went spending, spending, spending like crazy. Also government spending. All of these programs, programs, programs. All of that causes what you call recession after a while. And it's part of the law of rhythm. Anybody that ever ran a business, you see that, you know, business comes in waves. It comes time when it's like, wow, this is crazy. The line is wrapped around the door. You can barely keep up. And then all of a sudden, boom. Tumbleweed, quiet, nothing. A little trickle here, a little trickle there. And all of a sudden this wave comes again. You begin to scratch your head and ask yourself, are all of these people <laughs> communicating with each other? Is everybody getting paid at the same time? Is everybody experiencing hard times at the same time? In one aspect, yes, because we're all connected and we're all part of this field of energy as a cohort of, of humans, as a species, we are a certain entity on a certain level. We're really all one. So that's the law of rhythm. There's going to come times when it seems like, man, you know, ain't nothing going right. You see, your check hasn't come through. You know, whatever you're trying to do is bad communication, transportation, your car, the wheel got a flat, this and that. It's always something. And it's like, what is going on right now? You start looking into it, right? Maybe Mercury is in retrograde. Remember that? <laughs> People have the in, in the New Age movement when things are not going a certain way, it's Mercury in retrograde. See? But it's really the law of rhythm sometimes. It's the law of rhythm. Not every not all the time things are gonna be just a bowl of cherries. You go through your trials and your tribulations in life, and it's a ebb and flow it's the law of rhythm if you're in a relationship your relationship has a rhythm your heart has a rhythm giving you a clue to how the universe works see everything has a rhythm our planet has a rhythm she has a natural cleansing and revitalizing cycle which washes away impurities that we're headed to right now you see me now dressed in all white i'm getting in alignment with the purification based on the law of rhythm. You can't fight it, there's no sense resisting. You're just sign, signing up for suffering. You better ride the wave. We just have a, a phenomenal event, meditations and all of these as a family here at Hidden Power University, when we were wearing our white. We were wearing our white, just giving you a clue where we're going. It's coming about the time of solidarity as we focus our energy in alignment with the law of rhythm. So you know, that you know what it may be bad now it may be slow now 
We may be getting to arguments and contention now, but this too shall pass because it's part of the law of rhythm. One constant in the universe is what? Change. Things will change. At the end of every dark tunnel, there's always a bright light. I was telling one of my sons, my eldest, by the way, came down here from New York. At the end of every dark tunnel, son, there's a bright light, right? Those nights where you can't sleep and you're hearing weird sounds and it feels like a spiritual attack and shadows. After every dark, grim night, there's a bright, sunny day. There's a bright, sunny morning. It's the law of rhythm. See? Next is the law of vibration. And vibration simply states that everything is in movement. Everything vibrates on different levels and frequencies. This desk, this sports jacket, this raw power generator, all are vibrating on different levels. The air I'm breathing is on a certain level. You turn into certain people's YouTube channel, it's a vibration. Their aura has a vibration. Everything vibrates and moves. And based on this vibration, you have another law of resonance that ties into the law of attraction. Like vibrations tends to coalesce and attract. Like vibrations tends to coalesce and attract. It's based on resonance, right? So everything vibrates. And these laws are basic laws that apply to other alchemical processes. Remember, Tehuti was essentially an alchemist. All religion has its source in alchemy. See, all spirituality has its source in science. That science became known as alchemy, for lack of a better word, which is your, uh, 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 your source or the origin of modern day chemistry in all science, for that matter. All modern science comes from alchemy. So these basic laws are going to be used for higher metaphysical practices. We did some at our event. Inner, inner alchemy level one, becoming golden. That was the first level. By the way, students, make sure you're doing your practices and your assignments. It's very, very important. Next is the law of cause and effect. Law of cause and effect simply says for every action, there is some form of a reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction as well. But there will be a cause for every effect. You see, everything you do, everything you think, all right, even your inactions, they're going to have some form of an effect. You answer the phone, you don't answer the phone. You call in sick or you don't call. All of these things have effects. You see, there's consequences to everything. And it's a chain reaction of events that can lead you towards victory or defeat or mediocrity. Cause and effect. Understanding the law of cause and effect helps you proper strategize your life, especially when you tap into the butterfly effect. Knowing that even small, minute things can change your life. This whole lecture may have no effect, but one phrase or one statement of truth could change your life if you take it to heart and apply it into your life. Just one thing. It doesn't take a lot of things. That's the cause and effect of the butterfly effect. So understanding the cause and effect is very powerful. Also the law of gender. Gender simply means everything is a masculine and a feminine. Everything, all the way down to your subatomic particles. Masculine and feminine, everything. See, you have fiery and you have watery in different degrees of each. In alchemy this is why when we did our meditations we had the red light and we had the blue light right now you can see me with the blue for a purpose you see that's the watery aspect that's tapping in that's the, the receptive right it's also an energy of channeling and we know feminine energy watery energy is how you go into trance It's how you go into a Delta mind state so you can reprogram the content of your subconscious mind also tapping into the uh, uh, Akashic records, tapping into the mind of God, tapping into your intuition, 
your spirit of prophecy. See, that's the feminine aspect. Then you have the fiery aspect, which is ties into the law of action. You could think it all day. You could meditate all day. It come a point you're gonna have to take some action. Hidden Power University, we all about taking bold, right action. After you get that knowledge, you suppo it's supposed to change your life. It's not entertainment. We got a lot of entertainment out there. It's supposed to change your life. Put a tool in your hand so you can get busy and make things happen in your life. So everything has an aspect of those. Masculine and feminine. Masculine will be taking action. The feminine is more like meditation, uh, even distilling your intent, making sure you're moving in wisdom. And then you have right action, staying focused, pressing through adversity, pressing through resistance, staying on point, being disciplined, being consistent. Next is the law of attraction. I'm sure you've heard of the law of attraction. They have a movie about it that was a big hit. Like attracts like. Everything is held together by a level of attraction and by magnetism. If you look around you right now, everything is held together. You don't see things just being, you know, not held together and things just, what do you call it, disintegrating. No, everything is held together in form, right? The walls, right? Your body, right? The shoes you have on, your phone, your computer. It's all being held together by the law of attraction. In chemistry, this is known as chemical bonds, metallic bonds, covalent bonds, different bonds hold these things together. And the reason why they're held together, they're not even really held together, they're, they have proximity and they're sharing electrons, right? That give it a bond, so now it sticks together. See, that's magnetism. We live in a realm of attraction based on magnetism. How does this play into? This plays into polarity, this plays into gender, vibration, cause and effect. All of it is science. So when I get to transmutation and making things happen, you begin to realize that knowing these fundamentals is key to attracting your results that you want in your life. Ascension is a result, right? Seeing the hereafter is a result that you're aspiring to, correct? Abundance is a result. Healing is a result. All of these things, we have to apply the science. There's no spooky will out there that directs you. The Father gave you his essence inside of you. The reason why you experience certain levels of adversity in schools is because of lack of understanding of the will, which is the law. See? When you know the law and you align yourself correctly, you can circumvent disagreeable or apparently disagreeable events by aligning yourself with the law and transmuting energy within yourself. This is as simple as lifting a finger. See, you, put, you do a magic all the time, like I said earlier. Next is mentalism. Mentalism simply states that all is mind. The universe is mental and it's all in the mind. And that's a fact. Right now you're sitting down listening to this lecture. Uh, you're in a room, right? Or in some form of shelter or outdoors or in your car, wherever you may be. But wherever you think you are and whatever you're hearing, seeing, right? And experiencing, it's all what your brain tells you that you're experiencing. Everything is simply data coming into your brain. Through your eyes, the photons hit your eyes, that gets transferred into electrical impulses. The vibrations hit in your ear, they vibrate certain bones, those are turned into electrical impulses. Things that you taste, electrical. Things that you feel, the tactile sensations, are all converted into what? Electrical symbols. Symbols, that's a fact, but also uh, signals because it's a fact that they're symbols. That was a Freudian slip. That's all wise, right, and exact. But these signals and symbols have to be decoded. Well, it goes to a processor. Now, anything that's processing information has to be running on software. It has to be some type of program to determine how do I process this information. So your brain tells you the reality that you are experiencing. 
based on some software you have in your DNA. So it's all in the mind. It's all in the program and in the processing of external data. The truth is not in the data. The truth is in the processing of the data. For in the processing of the data gives you your truth of what reality is. It's all in the mind. How you look at it. How you frame it. How you choose. This is why we are heavily into upgrading the content of our subconscious mind. Upgrading our DNA. Right? Platinum is not, and iridium is not just DNA repair. It's also upgrading your DNA. That, along with this type of information, conversing and, and fellowship with people that's on like frequencies, you begin to vibrate on a different level of reality. And this is what it's about. So the things that you ingest, such as platinum and iridium, are extremely rare, precious metals. And you begin to vibrate mentally on a higher frequency based on what's in your body. So now you're resonating on the frequency of gold, nanoparticles of platinum. You see, it raises you up. This information raising you up slowly but surely. Next, the law of correspondence. The law of correspondence simply means as above, so below. So whatever you see happening uh, in, in earth, it's a reflection of what happens in the heavens. Whatever you see happening in your body is a reflection of what's happening in your mind and in your vital body, also known as the spirit, but your vital body or your car. As within, so without. See, in modern medicine, they call it psychosomatic and psychology to be more specific. Well, psychosomatic, psych means soul or spirit. Soma means body. So it's meaning the body, what affects the body affects the mind. What affects the mind affects the body. Okay. So if you are constantly thinking negative, you're feeling like a victim. This is why, you know, certain level of these black, uh, you know, expos and stuff like that. I really don't like to be around it because there's a lot of victim energy. There's a lot of poverty energy. And it's just, it, it muddles my, my robe. I get, I get, I might get a spot on my white robe. And that's all due to the law of what? Infection. Why would you go to a place packed with full of people, victim mindset? You see? Birds of a feather flock together. Why would I want to be around a multitude of broke people? Why? The law of infection. Living this information, you become very... Uh, 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 sensitive to energy become sensitive to it you see but anyway correspondence also states that as in the beginning so shall it be in the end so when we go through these cycles on this planet we can research and find out how things were at the beginning of this cycle like we went into Merkaba activation we went heavily into Gondwala right there was a cleansing after so many millions of years and then we had Lumeria another cleansing then we had Atlantis we have all of these different and we'll about 17 different ones prior to that my point is this as in the beginning so shall it be in the end you could look at it even in relationships how the thing began it reflects how it may end you see all of these things are the law of correspondence. And when you begin to internalize this law, now you get a level of prophecy and wisdom when you see the signs. It's not hard, but you have to know these laws, the law of correspondence. Law of correspondence is a big way of how you manifest using so-called magic. Everything corresponds and is connected to other things based on string theory. Right. Quantum mechanics has a has a, a, a theory called string theory. Everything is connected. Right. All the whole universe is really just one. So if I can put enough psychic energy into something, this cup. Right. And I say and I will it to be that this cup represents its weight in gold. 
and this cup is about 16 ounces, let's say 20 ounces. You know how much 20 ounces of pure gold is worth? And I say to myself with great conviction and will, and I declare it to be, when I ingest this water, I'm increasing myself in the weight of gold. And through the law of attraction, I am now attracting thus wealth to me. You see how I use the law? It's a fact. And I just open my eyes to it. And when you do that in an altered state of consciousness, now you become a bar of gold, spiritually or energetically. And based on your understanding and faith and, and, and trust and knowledge of the law, it must come to pass that all things are attracted to you that's on that level. 16 ounces of gold is approximately, let's see, about 50 grand, about 50 grand, give or take. So this is how the law of correspondence works. This is why our ancestors with hoodoo and voodoo, you set up an altar. What does an altar do? An altar means to change. It means to direct and alter reality. So you put things on your altar, which is your focal point, that correspond to what you want to manifest. You go into an altered state of consciousness and begin to manipulate these things through the law of correspondence. Now you're manipulating the exterior world. In truth, all's in mind. So I conducted this in my mind just now, right? And it will come to pass as within, so without. This is why I don't have to do physical rituals anymore. It's not about the physical. You become the magic. You walk in the miraculous by understanding these laws. Next is the law of mastery. The law of mastery, a little known law, but let me share it with you. Please share the video as well. This is profound. The law of mastery is also called the law of graduation. You see, you can't graduate to the Bentley until you master the Beamer. You can't graduate to the Acura until you master the Honda. See, all things are vehicles, just like a career. Sometimes people take a job because it's a vehicle to get the job they really want to get. So it's something that they need to have on their, on their resume as a piece of the puzzle to connect them to that next job. Well, it's the same thing with the spirit. You cannot graduate to the next level until you master certain basic things of the elements. If you can't master food, clothing, and shelter, you're not gonna be able to have the level of, you won't have enough time, you won't have enough uh, of the characteristics and the discipline, and should I say the character, and the discipline to do things on a higher level. Because really they're both reflections. If you can't be on time for things, you can't follow instructions, the master says do this, you come in in jeans, the master says this, you doing that, be on time from the break, you doing that, blah, 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 you doing that, it's a lack of discipline. And I'm not saying that to beat up on you, it's all for us to become better people and to become more disciplined. Because that discipline and that level of perfection, it bleeds over into your spiritual practices. You see? It bleeds over into your dietary practices. There's certain things that has to be done at an exact juncture in time when certain alignments of the stars happen. You late, you miss the boat. See? You don't have the right generator on, it's going to throw off the energy. So we have to become as impeccable as our ancestors. Look at those pyramids. You can't fit a razor blade in between those bricks. When they finished that, those pyramids, it looked like, each side of it looked like a sheet of pure white granite, smooth as a mirror, beautiful, perfect, with a gold capstone, all white. See, the level of, of, of perfection and discipline and engineering is, is remarkable. It's absolutely incredible. 
Well, we have to become that, people. We got to be on point. Get your download. Get your subliminal download, supreme confidence and impeccability. I promise you it'll change your life. HiddenPowerWellness.com. HiddenPowerWellness.com. It's under downloads, by the way. But going back to the law of mastery. I remember when I was maybe four or five years into my career and I was having a conversation with my dad. I went into education to be a teacher, not as an end goal. My goal was always to be a principal or a superintendent, but really a principal. And I felt like I, I can have the most impact that way as opposed to just impacting one class or one series of classes which children rotate through. I felt like I have more impact if I can impact the entire culture of a school. It came to pass that my dad said, you know, well, people tend to retire at their, at their level of incompetence. Well, I was like, wow, dad, that's deep. <laughs> that's deep. You say much deep stuff, but that's deep. Break that down. He said, yeah, see what happens is when you get a job or you get a, a promotion or a position, that's the level that you're at. And once you're able to do that on a higher level, you naturally graduate or promote it to the next level. And once you master that to a certain level that you can do that pretty much with your eyes closed, you naturally are promoted to the next level, you graduate. But when you get to a level that you can, you don't fully master, you tend to stay at that level. You don't graduate. You stay at that level. There's nothing wrong with that. And the same thing happened in the mystery school. Certain initiates came to a certain level and they said, I'm good. And they stopped. Others kept going, kept going, kept going. And then they stopped at another level. Another one kept going till they got to a level where they dematerialized. They have the power of dematerialization and control over the elements. Follow me? So where you're at, if you fit, find like you're stuck, that's because you're at a level that you haven't completely completed or level of mastery of competence. So it simply states, this is an example I use our events, pretty humorous. People want to be billionaires, right? Everybody want to be a millionaire and a billionaire. But look at how they take care of the house. Look how you take care of what God has blessed you with thus far. You see? There's people that want a fancy car, they're not even putting oil in the Honda or in the Kia. Right? Or they're, you know, 2001 fill in the blank. <laughs> Hoopty. Why would the Father bless you with more? You can't even take care of what you got. I see people talking about polygamy. You see? Can you support the one wife you have? Does she have to go out and work and do all of these things? Or is she able to be there and homeschool the children? And all their needs are taken care of. They're living in a beautiful neighborhood. Doesn't have a bunch of crime and broken glass and all of this stuff. See, crime everywhere. You gotta worry about if a stray bullet gonna go through the wall and all of this. That's, that's modern day perfect, uh, protection. They talk about a man being a protector. Well, to nowadays it's about being in the right environment because you can't be around somebody all day. See? So the ability to provide and protect, a lot of that has to do with being able to set up and have her in an environment that supports her being in her feminine. Can't complain about women not being feminine when we're not providing the environment for her to be able to relax in her feminine. See, protection. So that is mastery. That is mastery. So when you take good care of that hoopty that you have, you're getting regular oil change, you're shining the wheels up, you're getting the interior taken care of, you're loving that car, you're appreciative of that car, you're grateful, right? And you take care of it. That's a level of mastery. And that's just an example. The same thing applies to a job. Same thing applies to a relationship, wherever the case may be. Where you're at in your life denotes your level or your current level of mastery or lack thereof. Next is transmutation. The law of transmutation. Transmutation means that energy can't be created or destroyed. It simply changes form. 
In modern science, this is called the law of conservation of energy. Everything is what it is, always was and always will be. Ain't no new energy being created. There's no new matter being created. Everything simply changes form. So when you know and understand that there's a rhythm and there's, everything is vibrating, everything deals with magnetism and it's all in the mind, you put all that together, you begin to understand that, okay, things are not going quite the way I want them to go right now. There is a such thing as rhythm. Okay, well, I can't change necessarily the exterior world, but I can change the interior world, right, which is the source of the exterior world. Thereby changing my interior world, I could change the external. So if I'm feeling down and depressed, I'm going to make a conscious effort to act exactly opposite of that. I'm going to put on my favorite cologne. I'm going to put on my favorite song. See, I'm going to have my favorite meal and I'm going to watch my favorite comedian. You see, I'm going to vibrate on the energy of joy. Right. So what happens is this, even though things are going a certain way, you transmute yourself. The energy is still here, but that don't mean you have to experience it there. Right. You ride it and you come above and you transcend the negativity by raising your vibration it's like dodging bullets energetically you dodging those depression you dodging sadness you dodging guilt and grief vibrationally frequency wise by transmuting yourself you see transmuting yourself what's coming to this planet there's going to be a lot of sad face clowns unless you learn how to transmute the energy it's not going to be something that's necessarily very agreeable but like i said you must adjust your sails and it'll all work for your rise it's going to be like a trampoline when you adjust your sails so the wave of energy is coming direct your sails and this is what we're teaching here at hidden power university so that's transmutation mental transmutation Another way of understanding transmutation by way of the law of rhythm is when things get slow. I'm just going to use business. We have a lot of people saying they want, you know, to run their own business and to be the boss. Well, let me give you this. When it gets slow, that's your time to don't chase folks down. Maybe they're going through things. Maybe it's slow for a reason. That's your chance to improve yourself. Read some marketing books. Read some books on how to become, have a better online presence. Read some books on how to prepare your business and systemize your business for exponential growth. Right? Tool up. Go back to school. You see? One of my friends said they're going to go back and get their license. He's doing a lot of investing. He's like, man, I'm tired of paying these agents. You know, they, get, they give them a little kickback and stuff, but I'm tired of paying these agents. I need to get all of that. You go back to school. You see? Go back to school. You work it the right way. The whole thing becomes a write-off. See? It's a time and a place for everything under the sun. And that's more of the feminine. Remember I talked about taking action, the bull market, rah, rah, rah. That's masculine. That's inflation. Recession is a bear market. It's being more conservative. It's also being more, you know, saving and not taking action. But instead, you sit and relax and become like or set and go into that relaxed, cool, receptive energy, that feminine energy. And that is the energy of being a student, of learning, right? Sitting at the feet of the master, learning, tooling up. So when the winds change, now you can take action far better than, a, than somebody didn't understand the law of rhythm, right? And they, instead of going with the flow, trying to fight the wave, right? You instead learn. So now you're stronger than that person that kept trying to force it when the energy wasn't right and the season wasn't right. See, this is great, great wisdom. Next 11, or should I say, well, let's just, we did transmutation, so we'll do 11. The law of intentional action. This is, this is the law of intentional action. You must take action. All of the things that I'm teaching you here it's not going to bear fruit unless you internalize it 
and take action on it. If it doesn't change your behavior, in many ways you kind of wasted your time. To get the most out of these teachings here at Hidden Power University or in life in general, you must take action, intentional action. You see, once you do your visualizations, you do your subliminals or whatever you do, your prayer, there's going to come an opportunity for you to step up to your power and take action. Right after this video, it's a great time to take action and get that platinum law of action. Take action and get that iridium. Get that download, supreme confidence and impeccability. You took action. If you don't take action, you wasted a portion of your life listening to this broadcast. The wise take action. Right? Our members that went to the next level, they took action and came out to the event. Now they have a plethora of information and experiences beyond what you get on YouTube or in our members area. See? So the law of action, absolutely you have to take action. Next, 12, the law of one. All is one. We all come from one source. And in truth, we all are still that one source. See, it's the illusion that gives the fragmented views of separate images or separate entities of light. It's almost like a lake that's completely still. You look at yourself in the reflection of the lake in the moonlight and you see it like a pure mirror, a perfect reflection. When you splash your hand in the water, it all fragments, right? Through waves, through the frequencies. This gives us an illusion of hundreds of different entities or images that are fragmented in different ways that give different distorted views of that one face. But in truth, there is only one face. Follow me? So all is one. And like I said in the book, The Hidden Self, get that book if you haven't. There is only one self. When you're looking at another individual, you're looking at yourself from another timeline, another dimension, right? No matter who or what it may be, it is still you. It's only one. And I'm not talking about your person. I'm talking about the one self in terms of your connection to the all. We all are one, see, energetically. But we have the illusion that is separation. So this is where you get into your relationships, how you treat people, see? What you allow and what you don't allow, right? It's very key to understand there's only one self. When people engage in dark magic, uh, you know, they want to, uh, you know, they're bitter. So they're going to put a spell on that ex, make their Johnson that work or whatever the case may be. You know, make a person, you know, whatever. No one understand that you're doing that to yourself. The great master Jesus said, what you do to the least of you, you have done unto me. What you do to the least of you, talking about those people who may be poor or handicapped or whatever the case may be, disadvantaged, how you treat those people is how you treat your very soul. Christ comes from the word ka by way of the Greek Christos, which means spirit. So we're one soul and one spirit. So how you treat and interact with others is how you treat your own connection to source. So all is one. All is one, people. And this truth of these laws are basically the connection to you and unlimited power. You and unlimited power is manifested through the law, or should I say the goddess Ma'at in ancient Egypt. Ma'at means justice. Right? Truth, balance, also harmony and sharing based on consistently and persistently adhering to universal law. Okay? The law of one, which is love, and all of the different aspects that represent that. Okay? So walking in your magic is walking in my eye, it's walking in truth. 
and in harmony with the will of God that is manifested in universal law. You could shout, you could sing, you could praise, catch the Holy Ghost, whatever the case may be. You feel, it may feel really good. But if you're not aware of the law and how God's law manifests, then you're not tapping into the fullness of the presence. You're just tapping into the feminine aspect, which is the feeling aspect. But there's also a very meticulous aspect that is scientific and based on law. It's based on law. And that is the real magic. That is the real magic. If you do spells, if you do rituals, and you are not in alignment with righteousness, and not in alignment with universal law or the will of God, not only will it most likely fail, it can also backfire. Now, when I say fail, please know that just because it worked doesn't mean that you didn't fail. Because sometimes what you wish for could be your worst nightmare. Sometimes what you wish for can be your worst nightmare. This is why they say, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it, right? So you wish for this mate, this soulmate that you're gonna love so much, but your frequency is twisted. So you attract an individual like you who's twisted. And if you're a female, it'll be the masculine aspect. So now you find yourself in an extremely abusive situation and confusing situation because now you all connected to this person because you had sex. You measured up your energy, you have a connection, you have a bond to something that's twisted. So it becomes a toxic and twisted situation and relationship that is difficult to get out unscathed, right? It's difficult to get out unscathed. Now you may have a few children saying all that to say this get yourself right first before you get into the business of manifesting right distill your intent we're going to go into that be sure it's what you really need what you want is different it's about what you need because sometimes you push too hard you sign yourself up for a very very uh, treacherous school a school being a trial and tribulation in your life so this is why we teach a great deal about wisdom here at Hidden Power University and righteousness and living universal law, living truth, living my eye. Also giving you the tools in place to distill your intent. And that simply means really boil down to what you really, really, really want. Why do you want it? And why do you want it so bad? And what does it really represent? And if that's the case, how can you manifest that energy within yourself? to transcend having to have the physical thing. Because if you can have it within yourself, that's the goal. And now you become magnetized to attract the physical aspect. But the physical aspect of it is only a reflection of what you have already in your spirit. This is what we deal with here at Hidden Power University. Because the truth of the matter is, everything com comes with a trade-off. Everything comes with a price. I don't care what it may be, it's a price. Even if it's free, it's a price. And sometimes things that are free have the highest price, right? Because it's, nothing's really free. It's probably a scam. Did you know that in the ancient world, there was no word for free? There's no word for free. You see, free is a marketing scam, <laughs> pretty much. Just give us your email. It's all, it's free. Give us your email. Now, you had to give up that email. Now you gotta see this stuff always bombarded in your e in email box or whatever. You see, you paid with your attention. Now you gotta always give your attention to this person. And attention is the first, right, is, is one of the most powerful things you can have from a person. That's where you can get manipulation. You can't manipulate somebody that ain't paying, no, paying you no mind. We want your attention. That's the new currency. Beware of anything free. That's that chicken feed. So there is a reason why it may seem like everything is always being blocked. 
your prayers are not being answered. You can't get to the, uh, the, the, the job or you can't get the promotion. You can't get the relationship. It's like the good times effect. We talk about the good times effect here at Hidden Power University. Good times effect is a, is a, is a term that myself and Okiba Ra kind of coined, right? Having one of our discussions. He said, you ever notice in the good, at good times, certain things in my family, it's like the good times. It's, everything's going so well. It seems like little James Evans is going to get the scholarship and bam, something happens. JJ finally is going to become this great artist and bam, something happens. They're finally going to move out the projects, right? The father got a promotion. He's a, he's a, he's a, uh, you know, foreman now, a supervisor. Bam, something happens. And that was the one show that almost all the time ended in a negative. It ended in disappointment. The good times effect. Something always being blocked. You, sometimes you feel like you're cursed. Why me? It's like it dangles in front of you, tantalize you, tease you a little bit, snatch it away. Well, sometimes you're not ready. Sometimes you're not on the frequency. You're not, according to the law of vibration, right? You're not on the vibration of that thing that you want. It's a disconnect. You're not totally consistently resonating with it. And this is what happens when you're inconsistent. So you're consistent to a certain level, so you get close, then you get inconsistent and it falls off, it breaks the connection. You have to consistently be on a certain frequency. And able to maintain, you gotta stay on that frequency or higher. You can't be going to a lower frequency. Even if you did drugs and pop pills in your early 20s, now you're doing good, you can't go back to popping pills and things of this nature, because it's gonna put you off the frequency of being the manager. It's going to put you off the frequency of getting the house or getting the marriage because you're slipping back to old stuff you used to do. See? So you get to experience the good times effect. So the universe may give it to you in a way that will force you to grow and evolve, but it may not be pleasant. You see, sometimes the universe, if you force it hard enough and you're powerful enough, okay, give it to them. Right? but it's gonna come with a price. So you want the managerial position. Okay, you did burn your candles, you rub your chicken bones together, you got your beans and rice and your statue and all that stuff and you did it. You powerful, right? You made it happen. Okay, now you got the job. You used to work 40 hours, now you're working 65 hours, right? You have friends at the job. You can't be their friends like that anymore. I just did a video on friendship, how it doesn't work in certain situations. Now you are in a position of authority. You can't be playing with people that are subordinates to you. They're not gonna listen to you or take you seriously. And when your boss above you, see you're not being taken seriously, they're gonna fire you or demote you. You gotta cut them off to a certain extent or have a very, very serious sit down with them. But most likely, <laughs> I've seen it happen. The friendship, it takes a severe hit. It takes a hit. Because number one, dealing with the jealousy. Number two, you might have to check them. And it's like, that's my friend and all of the stuff. It's hard. So you may lose some friends. You're not getting as much sleep. You're not getting as much free time. Right? Certain higher positions, you got to wear the suit every day. You got the job, now you got this money, but now you, you, you becoming a different person. You got to become a different person now. It forced you to grow up. It forced you to grow up. You got what you wanted, <laughs> right? You got that marriage, right? Ain't no hanging out late anymore. Ain't no buying stuff for yourself first, and then oh, I didn't know the the kid got to go. The kids got to go to camp. Oh man, I didn't know we got to fix the roof. Oh man, family vacation, all this. <laughs> no, now you expect to put your family first. You got to put your family first. You see, same thing with women. You can't just be selfish anymore. The children come first, not your career, 
right? Not your looks and all of these things. No, the children come first. And any real man is going to expect you to put the children first. He married you because he felt you would be, hopefully, he felt you would be a good mother. And to do that nowadays, it takes dedication. It takes sacrifice. So everything comes with a price. But when you coerce and force the universe and you meddling in energies, tweaking the matrix, right? Guess what? You also will be coerced. You also will be forced. And you're going to be forced to go through a serious school of transmutation and change. Right? And that's just what it is. So whatever you desire, those things that you desire, it begins to shape you and mold you. As you change and contort your behavior to get your desire, you're also becoming a different person. So be mindful of what you desire because it can mold and change you in your attempt to be in alignment with it. You, in so many ways, can become it. So be careful what you wish for, for your desire can twist you and alter you, right, into another person. And that's pretty much what, what sin is or error is. It's not so much in the act. It's not so much in the things that you do, say, or not do, or eat. It's what you are becoming as a being. It's what you are now metamorphosizing into, right? If it's something that's foul and low, we always talk about ascension. Let's ascend, ascend. But there's also a certain thing called degeneration. And we're in the age of degeneration right now, right? Rotting out, dead, foul, filthy, low, weak, wicked, ignorant. That is what Kali Yuga is all about. So when you desire for things of this world, in this state, in this age, most likely you're going to be in a state of degeneration to attract those things. Because you got to be on the frequency of it. It calls to mind these Instagram models that get all this attention, all of this money, and you watching them. And you sending them money. You even fantasize and being with them. Some people even masturbate looking at these harlots. You see? What you're doing is propping up the Jezebel spirit and harlot energy. So being that you desire that harlot, you are being twisted and transmuted and transmogrified into one yourself. You a little hoe too. That's why you're tricking all of that money and time and energy looking at those prostitutes. You see, did you know part of the reason why they, they, they're in Dubai a lot? Middle Eastern men, very wealthy Middle Eastern men have a fetish for black women in the West. They got a fetish for it. So they fly them in and do all types of foul things, twisted things, right? And break them off with large sums of money. That's why they always in Dubai, all, all, all over the world, because they're international prostitutes. They're international prostitutes for these luxury brands as well. So when you venerate that, you put in the harlot on a pedestal. Now you lose all your integrity as a man. That's why some of y'all don't have any you know, luck with real women in the real world. You see, because you transform yourself into something that's weak. So be careful what you wish for. Be, cash, be careful what you twist. Or should I say what you desire? Because you become that. You become that. But when you venerate wholesomeness, right? When you venerate a woman that says, you know what? I want to be a wife and a mother. I want to submit to a strong man. Right. I want to live righteously. I want to live traditionally. Right. I want to be in my feminine. You follow me when you put that up. Now you align yourself to be in your masculine. You see, so be careful what you lust for and what you desire. Next, inner peace and being unshakable. 
and unmoved by the fiasco of the external world, the illusory world is the ultimate, ultimate goal. When you're not moved by, shaken by, they say shook, right? The person scared, they shook. You're not shook. It has no power over you, this physical world of illusion. You unstoppable, right? You are unstoppable. So meditation, cleaning out and clearing out toxins out of your body, out of your blood, killing the parasites that are in your blood and in your gut that excrete these toxins that give you weak and wicked thoughts, right? It helps you to be unfocused, fearful, and anxiety. All of that comes from toxins from parasites. Have you desiring things on a low frequency, arguing all of this? All of that is parasites. You clear all of that out and your meditations will become deeper, right? Your perception will increase. Your intelligence will increase. Your discernment will increase. Being in the company of those who are on the same frequency makes you sharper as well. These things increase your vibration and decrease your density, causing you to expand. Causing you to expand. Constant elevation of the mind and perception that causes expansion. So energetically, you become huge. In Islam, they say Allahu Akbar. And it means that the, the false translation is God is great. No, it means God is big, is huge. And it's symbolic to when you raise up to your Godhood nature, you become a spiritual giant quite literally, but not in the physical. Remember I told you as you expand and your energy increases, your aura increases, right? The voltage in your body increases, which creates a higher magnetism. You become illustrious and bright in your aura. They say the masters have auras like a mile to two miles wide. That's how big they are spiritually. So when they say there were giants in the earth in those days, it's not talking about something from Jack and the Beanstalk, some big person, right? One aspect it is because the Syrians uh, uh, did come to this planet, they were seven feet plus, but that's nothing. You got people seven feet now today. No, I'm talking about a mile high, you see, giant spiritually. So this expansion causes you to be like one of those giants. See, and this is how you walk in the miraculous. And this is how you are able to peer into different density levels. You have to raise this energy and raising that energy. You can't do it unless you align yourself with the will of God, which is universal law and understanding these laws and putting yourself on the frequency of the righteous and being around the righteous. So that's how you do that. Walk in your magic. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate you. We're looking forward to a fabulous uh, summer. There's going to be several series running coherently, um, or should I say uh, concurrently. Right? Hopefully they're coherent too, right? Uh, for, on Hidden Power University as well as on YouTube. So we give thanks. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Shalom, what I do, everybody. Look, if there's one product that I would say you have to mind the dosage and not take too much. <laughs> it's gonna be your platinum. Platinum is crazy, it calls all the time. It's not cheap, but it does exactly what it says it does. DNA repair, lucid dreaming, your libido goes through the roof. One of the main reasons why people age is because of DNA degradation. Platinum is gonna help with that. The aging process is a process of DNA degradation. So it helps with that. It also helps with your pineal gland. That along with the iridium is a powerful, powerful uh, synergy. These rare trace minerals work synergistically together to give you these powerful results. So mind the doses, people. If you don't believe me, I, I, I dare you to take, I dare you to go ahead and take the double, the recommended, recommended dose. First thing in the morning, you'll be moonwalking in the halls of your job. You see, 
you, you, you might start freestyle rapping in the car. <laughs> you might just have this, this onslaught of just jokes. All types of things start to take place with platinum. And on top of that, the spiritual aspect is ridiculous. Your insight becomes so clear. The things you need to do in your life become so, so clear. Everything looks, starts to look beautiful. Right now there's some ducks on the lake over here. And they look beautiful, they look beautiful. People you thought that you didn't even give an eye to, all of a sudden somebody with some, a crazy big nose or, you know, just something outlandish. You start seeing the beauty in crazy stuff. You start seeing the beauty in everything. Everything starts to brighten up and become in technicolor. Now this is partially the lucid dreaming because guess what? Life is a dream. But is your dream clear? Is it lucid? Anyway, Nazir Ra, I'm about to ride out right now. I just wanted to make this quick video. Looks like the sheriff is coming. <laughs> and I'm gonna roll out. Shalom Wadu. Here at Hidden Power University, we do everything big. Everything is big. So when I'm walking around and I see the plates, Look at that right there. See? 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 You got salad on top of salad. He uses like, soup for salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs> How's everything going, brother? Absolutely phenomenal. This is a phenomenal event. You know, right here with the master teacher. Not zero Ron, things of that nature. And we just having a phenomenal time. Vibing. Everybody's on the um, same frequency, vibrating at a high level. Mm -hmm. Peace and blessings. Come out to the next one. Yeah, yeah.